you know, uh, transitions are difficult. You know, w w one day you're, you're safe and warm and comfortable, and the next day you're in a cold room, someone's holding you by your heels and slapping your bottom. And that's just the first one, you see. Uh, I think w one of the most memorable transitions I had, which was difficult, was going from high school to college. And I know that's a big change for a lot of people. Uh, I think mine was maybe a little more uh, intense because for the first nine years of school, I lived in a small town. I knew everybody. Everybody knew me. We had a community there. And then my parents moved halfway across the country. And wouldn't you know it, they took me with them because, <laughs> but, 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 because that's the kind of people they were. You know? But uh, no, actually, I thought it was, was going to be a good thing. It's going to be an adventure and an opportunity to reinvent myself and all sorts of good things were going to happen. And eventually, yeah. But um, initially, it was difficult getting in. I had to accommodate uh, all the new things that were coming up with high school and without any support group. I had to make a whole new set of friends. And my mother didn't make things any easier, you see. When they, we were required to take phys ed in those days, and uh, they sent home a list of things that we had to bring in for the class. And my mother looked at it. We weren't poor, but we were very tight. And so my mother couldn't see why she should go out and buy me t-shirts when I had a perfectly good beige polo shirt in the closet that I never wore. And I never wore it because it wasn't the exciting shade of beige. It was, <laughs> it was sort of the beige of beige shades, you know? And uh, I knew I would be the only person in school who had a collar on his gym shirt, you see. That's, 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 that's thing. And I have somehow developed the, the idea that if you're going to be embarrassed or humiliated, the best thing to do is not to shrink away from it, but to embrace it, you see. So in those days, all the sneakers were, had canvas tops, and they were either black or white. So we went out and I got a pair of white sneakers and a magic marker, and I painted them emerald green. So now if I was gonna be different, I'm gonna be different. Uh, of course, it attracted the bully in the class uh, who enjoyed picking on me quite a bit, but at the same time, that also helped along with the transition. And I became, even uh, as, as time went by, a magnet for all the other social outcasts in the school, and they gravitated to me. So I wound up with, with a circle of friends. And uh, it, oh, after about the, the, the end of three years, I had a column on the school paper. I had even started to date. Things were looking good. And then they graduated me and threw my ass out onto the street. <laughs> so it was a come down going to be being the, 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 at the bottom of the college social structure again. Now as the, uh, at, at about this time, uh, you're probably asking yourselves, isn't this supposed to be about traditions? <laughs> He's talking transition. Did he misread the memo? <laughs> and what, well, no, that's coming up in act two, and you've already had your break, so we're in act two. When my parents moved across the country, they moved to a little town called Clemson, South Carolina, which is the home of Clemson University. And um, as my high school years were winding down, I began thinking about what I wanted to do for what I wanted to study. And I went through the catalogs, and I set off for all the college catalogs, and I went through everything, did a lot of work on that. And then I went to sit down with my parents to help them decide between the last two or three choices. And they helped me a great deal. They said, we moved to a college town so we wouldn't have to pay room and board when you went to college. So you can go anywhere you want as long as you live at home. <laughs> so that got me into in, in Clemson. And, um, uh, I, I have to, um, to say, it, it, it's a fine school, it really is, but the, uh, the reason I didn't particularly want to go there is I was a liberal arts kind of guy, and at that time Clemson was mainly agricultural, mechanical kind of school, and that was only half of it. The other half was that they had a tradition of being uh, an all-male school, 
up until just a few years before I arrived. So when I was looking to go there, they had a, a student body that was 3,000 men and 300 women. And you may think, well, that's only 10 to 1. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you have to look at it from, from the standpoint of a freshman, you see, because the women who were the, uh, of the upper class, the, the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, were not going to go out with freshmen. And the freshman women were going to be besieged by all the seniors, juniors, and sophomore men, and they weren't going to go out with freshmen. So I was looking at kind of a, a bleak social year there. And on top of that, now here, here we had the, the, the three things. One, I had lost status. I was in a depressed funk about that, having left, gone from being a senior to being a freshman again. And I was uh, not going to have a social life. And I was not going to be studying what I wanted to study. And on top of that, they had a tradition for freshmen, you see. When it was an all-male school, the incoming freshmen had to shave their heads on the first week and then wear this little beanie for the next six weeks. It was an orange beanie with a little purple C on the front. And that was what they did. Now, of course, now they had women, so they had to come up with something different for them. So the, the, the incoming girls had to wear a little orange and purple ribbon in their hair. A little. Now, if you think that's not the same order of sacrifice, you have to realize <laughs> that there were only 300 of them, you see, and we wanted to increase that number. So nobody was complaining on the male side. We, you know, whatever would attract uh, uh, more co-eds is good. Uh, and also, it didn't bother me much because I wasn't going to do it anyway. I have had a, a, a long-standing animosity to uh, initiations. I feel that any transition going into a new place and learning all new things is tough enough as it is without having artificial and unnecessary barriers and burdens placed on them, and I had, was not going to have any part of it. Now, this is where things. This is where my parents had done done me a good turn because by keeping me at home, I didn't have that 24/7 peer pressure. I drove in, I went to class, I got in the car, and I came home afterwards. So, I didn't really have that kind of pressure to go ahead and shave the head and wear the beanie. But between classes, as I'm walking from one building to another, I would often be accosted there in the, in the beginning saying, uh, you better get your ass in gear, boy, and go to the barber shop. There was no room for questions or, or discussion. That was the, the order. And of course, I ignored it. And then they stopped asking. They stopped telling me what, what to do. And I thought, well, this is blown over until we got to the sixth week of this six-week initiation period. And then someone came up and handed me a piece of paper. And I opened it up. It said it was a subpoena to appear before the student court. And I thought, ah, this is what they were doing. They were holding it off, holding back now, so that when everybody else had their hair back in and nobody was wearing beanies, I'd be the only bald guy walking around the campus. You see. <laughs> that was their plan. And uh, it, was, it was fiendishly clever. You know? And while I had to admire that, I still wasn't going to do it. Now, I, I, I knew I could ignore the tradition part of it, because that's kind of vague and amorphous. I didn't know if I could ignore a student court, because I had no idea what powers they might have, what they could do to me. And I didn't want to find out. So I spent a lot of time reading this thing over and over again, which wasn't hard. It wasn't complicated. It just said, you have to appear at this date. <laughs> And I realized that uh, two things. One, it just said appear on this date. It didn't say what time. So I figured, well, he must be having the court open all day and just taking case after case. And uh, then I looked at the date, and I went to the calendar, and I realized they really wanted to rub it in. They not only had it for the last week of the initiation period, they had it for the last day of the last week. And by coincidence, the last day of the last week was a Saturday. Right? Now, I've lived in Clemson for three years already. This is, a, this is a small town. You could put the whole town in the football stadium. And on Saturday, after, the best time to go to the movies was on Saturday afternoon in football season. It was great because you could pick any seat in the house. There was no one sitting in front of you. There was no one making noise behind you. And you didn't have to climb over anybody. It was great. Go to the movies. And then you come out of the movies. And you know how when you leave the movies, your head's full of all this fiction and fantasy and whatnot, and you walk outside the door and there are no cars on the street. There are no pedestrians on the sidewalk. It's like a ghost town. 
except in the distance you hear the, the cheering from the stadium. <laughs> and they wanted me to go to court on a Saturday. Okay. I figured the condemned deserved a hearty meal, so I waited until after lunch. <laughs> and then I took a shower and I got dressed and like that. And I showed up at the court a half hour after kickoff. And I walked in the room there, and there were the tables lined up, and here were all the chairs. But there was no judge. There was no prosecutor. There was no recording secretary. There was nobody in the room. So I waited around for a little bit to see if anyone would show up. But there was nobody in the entire building. So after about five minutes, I thought I would have given the best shot. I came in, as, as per the letter. And I went down the stairs and across the sidewalk walked out to my car, and off in the distance, I could hear the people in the stadium, Yay! and I knew somebody had made a good play. 